Here, Republic of Ghana. Oh. Honorable Marietta Bigopon, who chose to allow herself to be used to issue a statement on the letterhead of the opposition to the National Democratic Congress in a matter that is beyond solving. The matter at hand is a judgment against Airbus SE. Airbus SE, as you all by now realize, is Europe's largest aerospace international. And it's confessed to a high court in London of paying huge bribes in order to secure contracts in several countries, including Ghana, between 2011 and 2015. The plane maker has been fined in excess of 3 billion euros. 3 billion euros as penalties. And this is a sum that as the corruption campaigners are saying is the largest ever corporate settlement in the history of corruption where to settle in the form of deferred judgments. In other words, instead of going through a trial, the potentially guilty party engages prosecutors and accepts penalties that it will pay in concession for what they have done. And in this case, this is probably the largest that has ever been seen. Because the court described the corruption that was uncovered as, and I'm quoting, grave, pervasive, and pernicious. And this is the corruption that involved Ghana. The court further noted that Airbus used and I quote, a network of secret agents to pay large-scale backhanders to officials in foreign countries to land high-value contracts. Unquote. Court documents and proceedings of the internet say a high-ranking elected Ghanaian government official was allegedly involved in acts of bribery intended to improperly influence his conduct of government business. That official is further referred to as government official one in the court documents. This network used high-ranking elected government official, known as government official one, to conduct its business. On the face of the evidence presented, government official one appears to be no other than former president John Dramani Muhammad, now presidential candidate of the MBC for the 2020 presidential and general elections. The new patriotic party would have been content with the swift response of the government in referring the matter to the office of the special prosecutor. Indeed, we would have, and we commend His Excellency the President for his swift decision to refer the matter to the office of the special prosecutor. A statement came out late last night that the presidency had requested the office of the special prosecutor to pursue the matter to a close. It is welcome and very necessary because it's an international <coughs> matter and other countries involved have also set up a place of their own. So that means the standards are international. You can't get away with local standards. The international community are in on it. They are watching. Those other countries have started their investigations. But now we started a referral to the OSB. It is important to note that the former Attorney General's intervention on behalf of Kandi Mahama is very, very weak. And unable to directly respond to the hard facts as put out by the United Kingdom CEO's Lord Office. It is therefore necessary, and we are calling the former president out, that former president, now Kandi John Dramani Mahama, responds directly to the issue himself. Question Is he government official one? Question, is he the high elected Ghana government official, also known as government official one? Tandit Mahama is no stranger to speaking to the international community and the world. So he shouldn't find any difficulty responding to these questions we are putting him now. He has been known to assemble diplomats and speak to them, even when he was telling them lies. We all recall 
the aftermath of the I was West War Commander. He actually assembled the analysis and showed them videos that were not reflective of the matter at hand. When he was exposed, he went quiet. Now, we want him to assemble the diplomats and tell them whether or not he's involved in the EPAS, SE scandals, as government official one. You should tell the whole nation what he knows about government official one and the processes leading to the purchase of the aircraft from Airbus S. He was, he was president at the time. The serious matter at hand and the accusations demand immediate action. It's a very serious matter. To have accused government official one, who we believe solidly to be of complicity in an organized effort to do the government in acquiring high value contracts at an international level. It's a matter that we believe stains the reputation of Ghana and therefore requires immediate action to restore our international reputation. At the risk of letting you know what you know already, it's still important. The story so far is reasonably clear. Airbus S in seeking to sell Ghana three military transport planes between 2009 to 2015, actively engaged government official one, who we believe strongly is John Hammond, and further described him as a key decision maker in the purchase of aircraft by the then government of Ghana. Though the deal for two planes was concluded in 2011, the elected government Elected government official would not have been the late President Mills. The elected high level government official could not have been President Mills because the evidence identifies a go between who is said to be a close relative of government official one. In other words, for those who are using timelines to say that your mama couldn't have been the high elected official and not government official one, because at the time, the first deals were concluded in 2011. He was not the president. They've been misfiring because the betweener, the betweener had already been identified. That go between was referred to as intermediary five in court documents. And intermediary five is further identified as a UK national born in Ghana who is said to have migrated to the United Kingdom as a young child and therefore lost touch with the Ghanaian family until the late 1990s. Now the corroboration comes from the president himself. According to President Mohammed's account of his siblings in his book, My First Good Dad, the profile of intermediary five appears to fit perfectly that of the long lost and found brother who was in the UK. Having been found, intermediary five, the brother conveniently surfaces to be the preferred business partner of Airbus in his deal with the government of through his brother, government official. So there is no doubt that the deal was and couldn't have been president. Remarkably, but not surprisingly, intermediary five had no experience whatsoever in the aerospace industry. A CV provided to Airbus in 2011 listed his employment before 2009 as an events manager for a local authority. Director of a football merchandising company and a facilities manager for an estate management business. Yet, yet, intermediary five was able to initiate contact between Airbus and the government of Ghana about aircraft sales. Court records state that as early as January 2009, he immediately power changed hands in Ghana. Airbus had understandings with intermediary five to pursue government official one which fed directly into the expression of interest sent out by the government of Ghana around June 2009. From 2009, intermediary five and its associates worked on the sales to the government of Ghana without even a written consultancy agreement. This included consistent liaison with government official one, which as we've said, we believe strongly is then your power as the key decision maker regarding the potential Airbus C295 
seal the government of Ghana. On December 7th, 2009, intermediary five and another associate registered company D in Ghana, this on the of records. A company of the same name was incorporated in the UK in February 2010. Company D, the corporate vehicle through which intermediary five and his associates provided go between services to Airbus and government official one. It's key here because they met government official one in London where a final decision was taken for the government of Ghana to acquire planes from Airbus. It is important to know that the two associates who were working with intermediary five did not even have any experience either. They were a UK television actor, film director, another former UK television actor. So it is clear that Company D was a shell company set up to ensure that it was a funnel through which Airbus SE and government official one could negotiate and work together. Therefore, when intermediary Five presented Company D to Airbus to formalize their relationship. It was rejected because Airbus commissioned an external due diligence report of Company D. The resulting report identified Intermediary Five as a shareholder and the possibility that he was a close relative of government official one, who, of course, is John Mahama. Now, the import of that is that it raised issues the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD Convention of Corruption. That they couldn't work with intermediary five immediately and give him a contract was that it could clash with OECD conventions. So what did they do? To prevent detection, company B connived with Airbus and an intermediary eight, they produce another share company to falsify documents so that intermediary five could be paid through intermediary eight. The consultant agreement between eight and Airbus was backdated in order to accommodate this change from March 2012 to January 2010. This was, of course, to make sure that whatever work had been done by intermediary five was paid for through intermediary eight. That agreement provided for a commission in percentage terms. Needless to say, on 3rd August 2011, the government of Ghana signed a purchase agreement for the sale of two C295 aircraft. Between March 2012 and February 2014, Airbus is said to have paid with a, with a, a total of 3.9 million euros nearly a million euros over the agreed commission, which was about 3 million euros. We are further told that between 10th April 2012 and 31st July 2013, Intermediary 8 paid 3.850 million euros to Company D. Intermediary 8 retained about 16,000 euros for itself. As we speak, an attempt to repeat the same thing for the last aircraft failed because they couldn't find Intermediary 8 to be the between us again. And they couldn't work with Company D because of the relationship and because they were not really genuinely qualified. So, as we speak, Company D requested 1,675,000 euros from Airbus for the sale of the last aircraft, but it was not paid by Airbus for the produce the contract. In the face of these facts, it is very necessary for Kandid Mahama to come out and be heard publicly. He cannot continue to hide behind that, including a former attorney general. Of course, we are all aware that he hates answering questions about corruption. He would like to find out if the question is being asked as a former president or as a candidate of the NDC or as a human being. <laughs> but answer, he must. Because at this moment, Allegedly, all figures point to him and one of his brothers, his long lost brother, who he found in the UK. The 
companies used to receive the bribe money have been named in the court records. The shareholders, the shareholder, the key shareholder who is very close to the former president, has also been named. Document falsification, kickbacks, lies, and overpayments is what the airbag scandal is all about. And it appears your Ramani Mahama is deeply involved. If you come out and tell us he was not involved, and if he was not involved, who were? Because at the time he was the president, he presided over the kids, he was the key decision maker, and he inaugurated the aircraft when they arrived. Significantly, this is just one of Mohammed's corruption scandals, where it is alleged that he personally leads the negotiations and for his close associates to dispute on his behalf and collect the bribes. Ladies and gentlemen, the Airbus issue appears very similar to the Embraer investigations. You will recall then, Matinambi, now the special prosecutor, special prosecutor. who was tasked by President Mills to set up a committee which was aborted in mysterious circumstances. I hope you recall that the committee was set up and aborted in mysterious circumstances. As chairman of the Ghana Armed Forces Council, then Vice President Obama was frantically receiving delegations from Brazil and negotiating the acquisition of five things, including the most expensive hunger for this poor nation. We will recall $17 million hunger. Not to talk about the three million dollar ladder and the extra fuel tank and all those things which were justified for those huge sums uh, which was foisted on this nation. The late President Mills, in his so rest in peace, was apparently shot and suspicious of the negotiations when it came to his notice. And that is when the Attorney General then asked that the committee be set up. And you will recall that we were told that the committee included the Honorable William Abwa, then head of immigration, Mr. George Abwa, and Brigadier General Alote Retire. The job was to investigate the excesses in the acquisition of the Embraer aircraft from Brazil. Committee wound up with him in One of the things Marty Amini said, and I'll quote him. That said, that pressure groups never allowed the committee to take off. But the very fact that the late President Mills contemplated this committee meant that he was uncomfortable with and suspicious of the alleged inflated prices of the aircraft. The state nation is still not the wise about the truth of the Embraer allegations. This was an intelligent serving in government serving vice president, key decision maker as chairman of the armed forces, ensuring that the army would be equipped, who had come under suspicion for another deal all about the same time that the Airbus matters were on board. We should realize that this is not the first time the court has boldly declared the Mahama regime an official autocracy. This is not the first time. This is not the first time. This is a UK court declaring that there were issues in the It confirms what the Ghanaian Supreme Court said that from Mahama and his government came to create, in quotes, to create, loot, and share the resources of the Republic. Only regime ever led by John Harman to have been indicted by a court twice on high profile corruption claims. The nation has had major issues of corruption and important allegations have been made against John Harman personally in his time at the helm of government. He was also personally involved, if you recall, in the fourth bribery scandal, Kalazoe in the Eastern Corridor, and the Amajaro issues which was also foreign to the UK. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a test case. This is a test case. A test for whether Joe Mahama 
is fit for purpose in his intent to return to the presidency of Ghana. Can the destiny of this nation once again be entrusted to one who is proving to have indulged the nation's trust with self-dealing for personal enrichment? Fit for purpose tests have become common in public life. Go to football, they are talking fit for purpose. Go to banks, they are looking at fit for purpose. Anywhere you turn now where it involves a public trust, they are looking at whether or not you are fit for purpose. So we are asking. The MPP is asking. The people of Ghana want to know is candidate Mahama fit for purpose? Is he capable? Of leading a genuine charge at the presidency and capable of delivering on our trust. We contend that he's not fit for purpose. And until he's able to come up with it and confirm or deny that he is indeed fit for purpose, as far as we are concerned, we want to believe that he cannot and he should not be allowed anywhere near the presidency of Ghana again. Thank you for coming. And may God bless you.